Behind the veil of opulence and grandeur that adorn the Forbidden City, a chilling chapter in the lives of Chinese women unfolded through the historical institution of concubinage. Countless concubines endured a harrowing existence, subjected to a plethora of horrific practices and mistreatment within this hidden realm. Deeply nestled within the secluded imperial quarters, these women led a carefully protected existence. Confined within the boundaries of the inner court, their lives revolved solely around the unpredictable desires and whims of the emperor. Their every action, every moment, was intertwined with the intricate tapestry of power and privilege that permeated the Forbidden City. Among the multitude of women serving as maids and servants, only a chosen few held the revered position of concubines. Their duty was extraordinary, yet burdensome, to bear children for the emperor, become the vessels of his legacy, and relentlessly strive to fulfill the demands of the imperial bloodline. For those fortunate enough to give birth to sons, a remarkable twist of fate awaited them. These women ascended through the ranks, rising to the esteemed title of imperial consorts, while the empress reigned as the ultimate authority at the zenith of the social hierarchy. Within the inner court, the intertwined lives of concubines, palace servants, and royal princesses formed the three central groups of women, their destinies intricately interwoven with the desires and aspirations of the emperor. The Selection Process of Chinese Concubines The process of selecting concubines for the Chinese emperors was a complex and highly regulated affair, offering a glimpse into the meticulous intricacies of ancient court life. From the Jin Dynasty onwards, young women were chosen as Shunu, or elegant females, to serve in the imperial court. However, the selection criteria and methods varied across different dynasties, reflecting the evolving preferences and policies of the emperors. During the Ming Dynasty, the selection process was widespread, encompassing women from various households. As dictated by statutes, all young, unmarried women needed to undergo the Shunu selection process. Only those who were already married or possessed certified physical disabilities or deformities were exempted from this rigorous procedure. This approach ensured that a vast pool of candidates was available for the emperor's consideration, enabling him to choose from a diverse range of prospects. However, as the Qing dynasty came into power, Emperor Shuinji implemented changes that limited the selection primarily to the eight banner families. These families were predominantly of Manchurian and Mongolian origin, and this shift significantly impacted the composition of the concubine selection pool. To facilitate the process, the Board of Revenue dispatched notices to officials in both the capital and provincial garrisons, enlisting the assistance of clan heads. The banner officials played a crucial role in the selection process. They compiled comprehensive lists of eligible females within their respective banners and submitted these records to the commander's headquarters in Beijing and the Board of Revenue. This meticulous record-keeping ensured transparency and accountability in the selection process allowing the authorities to keep track of the available candidates and maintain order in the proceedings. Once all the necessary preparations were in place, the Board of Revenue set the date for the selection. On this designated day, the chosen women would be presented before the Emperor, who would personally evaluate their physical attributes, grace, and other desired qualities. It was during this critical moment that the Emperor exercised his discretion, selecting concubines who captivated his attention and satisfied his preferences. The selection process for Chinese concubines, known as Shunu, was a highly organized and regulated procedure. From the broad eligibility criteria in the Ming Dynasty to the narrowing focus on the eight banner families in the Qing Dynasty, the process evolved to reflect the changing dynamics of the imperial court. By adhering to strict protocols and involving various officials, the selection process aimed to maintain order and ensure that the most eligible candidates had the opportunity to become concubines of the emperor. The Elaborate Requirements of Selection The selection of Chinese concubines during the Qing dynasty was a fascinating and multifaceted process, encompassing various stages, each designed to ensure that only the most exceptional candidates were chosen. This rigorous selection procedure occurred within the majestic confines of the Forbidden City, where girls gathered at the appointed day accompanied by their parents or nearest relatives, clan heads, and local officials at the imposing Xinwu, or Martial Spirit Gate. One of the notable aspects of the selection process was that social background held no barrier. 
emperors had the freedom to choose concubines from the general public, broadening the pool of potential candidates and reflecting the diverse tapestry of Chinese society. However, there was one exception to this rule, the empress. She was always selected from the family of a high-ranking official, emphasizing the importance of political alliances and connections within the imperial court. Less than 100 candidates would be chosen to begin the selection process. These select few would spend several nights under the guidance of experienced women who specialized in training and managing maids. During this time, their bodies would undergo meticulous inspection for any skin infections, body hair, or body odor. Attention to detail was paramount as the emperor sought physical perfection among his potential concubines. The finalists who passed the initial scrutiny would then be initiated into various forms of acceptable behavior. They were taught how to speak, gesture, and walk in a manner befitting the imperial court. In addition to social graces, they would also receive instruction in various arts, such as painting, reading, writing, chess, and dancing. These skills were deemed essential for a concubine's ability to entertain and engage the emperor. As the selection process advanced, the standout candidate would be given the opportunity to serve as the emperor's mother's maid for several days. This served as a final test, during which their conduct and ability to attend to the mother's daily needs were observed closely. Sleeping by the mother's side, they were scrutinized to identify any undesirable nocturnal habits, such as snoring, emitting odors, or talking and walking in their sleep. Every aspect of their behavior was examined to ensure that only the most refined and impeccable candidates moved forward. The top 50 candidates who passed these arduous stages were subjected to further examinations and interviews covering math, literature, and art. Their responses and performance were meticulously evaluated, and they were ranked accordingly. From this rigorous evaluation, the three favorites would be designated as the highest-ranking imperial concubines, signifying their exceptional standing among the candidates. While a select few concubines may catch the emperor's eye and win his favor, the majority would lead lives plagued by bitter loneliness. Politics and jealousy were prevalent within the harem, adding another layer of complexity to the concubine's existence. Beauty, rather than being a blessing, often became a curse during this period in Chinese history. The Intriguing Lives of Chinese Concubines Within the walls of the imperial palace, the activities of Chinese concubines were carefully regulated and closely observed. Bound by strict rules and under the watchful eyes of powerful eunuchs, their lives revolved around serving the emperor's desires. Let us explore the captivating activities that filled their days and nights. First and foremost, it was paramount for concubines to adhere to their exclusive relationship with the emperor. Engaging in any form of intimacy with another person was strictly forbidden. Eunuchs, who held significant influence within the palace, played a crucial role in overseeing and monitoring the concubines' activities. Prior to the emperor's visit to their chambers, concubines would undergo meticulous preparations. They were required to bathe and undergo examinations by court doctors to ensure their physical well-being. As the emperor had a vast number of concubines at his disposal, being chosen for his visit was both a privilege and a cause for envy among the women. Rivalries among the concubines were common, fueled by the emperor's attention and favor. Each concubine had her own designated room within the palace. During their leisure hours, they would engage in a variety of activities to pass the time. From meticulously applying makeup to honing their sewing skills, concubines would immerse themselves in various arts and crafts. Socializing with other concubines also filled their days, providing a semblance of companionship in the often lonely palace life. However, it is important to note that many concubines spent their entire lives in the palace without ever having any contact with the emperor. The sheer number of concubines at his disposal meant that only a select few would have the opportunity to capture his attention and win his favor. For the majority, life within the palace walls was marked by bitter loneliness and unfulfilled desires. The ranking of the concubines remained consistent, but the number of consorts and concubines varied depending on the preferences of different emperors. This fluctuation meant that the hierarchy within the palace was subject to change, further fueling tensions and competition among the concubines. The Intricacies of Polygamy in Ancient China Polygamy was a prevalent practice in feudal China, though it was limited to upper and wealthy middle-class men 
due to the financial resources required. It served as a symbol of male potency, where having multiple wives was viewed as an indication of a man's virility. The primary focus of polygamy was on procreation and the continuation of the father's family lineage. Confucianism emphasized a man's ability to manage his family as part of his personal development, and securing a successor to the throne was especially crucial for the emperor. Within the realm of polygamy, the main wife held superior status over the other wives. She adhered to the principles of polygamy and assured the role of guiding the other wives towards harmonious behavior for the greater good. Women, particularly the main wife, were expected to transcend their earthly emotions. The belief that they were living for a higher purpose helped suppress feelings of bitterness, jealousy, and rivalry. It was important for the husband to avoid favoritism and for each wife to receive an equal share of his affection, discouraging passionate attachments. Each dynasty in China had its own system of titles and ranks for the imperial wives. At the pinnacle stood the empress, followed by successive tiers of wives occupying lower ranks. The hierarchy was determined during specific occasions, such as when a new wife entered the imperial family and was assigned a rank. It was believed that organizing the emperor's intimate relationships was vital for the overall well-being of the Chinese empire. Remarkably, the Chinese calendars of the 10th century were utilized not for timekeeping, but rather to manage the emperor's schedule of sexual encounters. The rotation of concubines who slept with the emperor adhered to a regimented order, and secretaries were employed to meticulously record these encounters using brushes dipped in imperial vermilion. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Remember to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and share the video.